This week our travels take us here to Lexington, Kentucky for the 30th annual Festival of the Bluegrass. If you're an RVer that likes great mountain music, this is the place for you. Let's enjoy some bluegrass. This is Bluegrass Country, featuring bluegrass music. The music was created just east of Lexington, about an hour from Louisville. The area is also RV friendly, with plenty of RV parks in the surrounding areas and the beautiful hills of Kentucky to explore. The Louisville area is also known for a couple of other things in addition to music, both related to sporting events, horse racing and baseball bats. This is the home of the world famous Churchill Downs and of course, the Louisville Slugger Bat. Both have rich histories in two of the great American pastimes. They call the running of the Kentucky Derby the most exciting two minutes in sports. I didn't really believe it until I saw my first derby a few years back. It truly is one of those events you have to see in person at least once in your life. Churchill Downs has been here since 1875. This is the major league sport in the city of Louisville. When people think of a major league athlete here, they might think of Jockey Pat Day. And this is just part of the community. We try to instill and uh, create an atmosphere here at Churchill Downs where you want to bring your family. And a big part of the fun is trying to pick the horses using whatever theory works for you. Who do you see that you like right now? Um, we have absolutely no rhyme or reason, first of all. We should yeah, preface that we, with this. I usually go, like, if I like their face, like, because I actually have a horse, mm -hmm. and I kind of base it on if they look like him. I yeah. get kind of attached, so. Yeah. Do you, do you see any horses here that remind you of yours, then? Actually, number three had a face like his, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so there it is. We're betting five bucks to win on horse number seven in this race. Uh, why horse seven? Well, both thought it looked smooth when it was walking in. In addition to horse racing, the other big attraction here in Louisville, baseball. It's the home of the Louisville Slugger. Let's go inside and see how they're made. They've been making the famous Louisville Slugger bats here the same way for over 100 years. You can take a factory tour and see exactly how they crank out the famous bats and burn in that magic Louisville Slugger trademark. We make sure that we put it on the weakest part of the bat. And you can pick out the weakest part of the bat by looking at the flat of the grain. The flat of the grain is where the bat sort of comes to a point or to a V. Maybe you can see it better on that side. Oh, yeah. Okay? Rather than where the lines are straight. That's the sweet spot right that's up here. That's the strongest part of the bat. That's absolutely right. That's where you want to hit the ball exactly. right up there. Exactly. Not down here on the trademark. That's right. That's right. So we always tell people, I'm a righty. Okay. We always tell people, you know, to hold the bat up so that you can see the trademark or so it's directly away from you. Guests can also tour the fascinating Slugger Museum with many interesting artifacts, including original bat contracts with legends like Yankee Joe DiMaggio, signed in 1933. And also the Wall of Fame with the signatures of more than 8,000 players who signed on with Louisville Slugger during their baseball careers. We happen to be there on one of the free appraisal days when baseball fans can bring in their memorabilia to see what it's worth. Babe Ruth autographed baseball, and what year was this? I don't know. My dad was born in 27, so right. I would say mid-30s. And so this was appraised today at how much? About 1500 he said. I wasn't quite so lucky with my Roger Maris and Willie Mays collectibles, saved from my childhood in Moline. Uh, this would sell for, uh, on the internet for probably 75 to 100 bucks. The original bluegrass music was created just east of here near Lexington and thousands of fans and RVers gather for one weekend every year at the Festival of the Bluegrass. The area is filled with music from over 26 official bands and hundreds of others who gather around the campsite and just let it happen. How did this all start, Gene? Well, my husband commits to things, but he has to have somebody to follow through, and that's me. And 30 years ago, he made up his mind he wanted to have a bluegrass festival, and uh, I clean up after him. Yeah, and I'm looking at a lot of RVs out there oh, because yes. our audience are RVers. So tell us about the RVing here. Well, um, it's really going to a festival, and um, the RVs are getting more and more in number, and they're getting bigger and bigger in size. But the fellow with the pickup truck is welcome also. 
The pickups and the RVs were scattered throughout the park, as were the thousands of bluegrass fans. So what do you like about bluegrass music? Uh, just, it's a feeling, you know, uh, my, my father's from Estill County and Irvin, and uh, it's strange, when, up until my 26th year, I really never cared about it. I was into all the, you know, the rock and roll, the heavy metal stuff, and just one day it hit me, you know, I really, it's something in your soul. When you hear this music and these guys get up here and they really fire on it, it just, it, uh, it makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. All right, so we've seen a lot of barbecue and food setups in our RV experiences, but this one really caught our eye. Let's check and see what they're cooking. Those were army ovens. I converted them from gas to propane. I built the trailer, hooked it all up. Been doing it about three years. Yeah, and I hear the question, when's dinner? I'd probably be about six o'clock. About six o'clock. And tonight we're gonna have ribs, you say? Ribs, fish, mm -hmm. chicken. You know, I think we came a little too early. That's, that's what we did. We came early here. You could walk from one RV to another, eating and listening to the music all weekend. And we got a bluegrass lesson from Rick Maxfield of the Royal Blue Bluegrass Band. Just to keep the time in the band. It's to keep all the people who are really having a hard time with their instruments, with the <laughs> rhythm together. It keeps the band in one Kind of the time. rhythm section. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, it, it's a timing section for us. Like the ball. Like the ball. Like the ball. Coming up, we'll meet the Killens, a musical full-timing couple, and discover where they recorded their latest CD. 